so my name is Cody Horn. I am a first year infectious disease fellow here at the University of South Florida, and I'll be giving my grand rounds presentation on neglected tropical diseases. And so this is an excerpt from the WHO website um, about what a neglected tropical disease is. Um, and while I won't read all of it, uh, you can see that some of the themes are highlighted in red. And what you can understand is that uh, there's a lot, obviously, poor countries, slums, conflict zones, poverty. Um, and this includes much of the world. So more than uh, a billion people worldwide um, are affected by these neglected tropical diseases. Um, and in these poor regions, of course, you have unsafe sanitation and poor water sources. Um, and unfortunately, these diseases can kill, impair, or permanently disable um, many of these people who contract these diseases. And here's a, a cartoon of the world. As you can see, uh, many of the regions are highlighted that are poor. Um, all the, the entire continent of Africa um, has many neglected tropical diseases present in one country. Uh, the, the dark orange, you can see the Sahara Belt, uh, has five or more neglected tropical diseases present. And there in the United States, uh, they have no neglect tropical diseases, of course. So here's a list of WHO um, neglected tropical diseases. And while I won't go through all of these today, I will just hit on a few of these, such as the Borrelia ulcer, Chagas disease, cystrichosis, uh, human African trypanosomiasis, and onchocerciasis. The first one we'll talk about is Chagas disease. Uh, it was found in the early 1900s and it's transmitted uh, by the triatamine bug, um, the kissing bug, rejuva bug, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and the parasite is Trypanosoma cruzi. So what happens is this bug will bite uh, an individual and simultaneously defecate on the skin. Uh, when the individual scratches it, um, unfortunately, the trypanosomiasis go into the, the, the skin and contaminate the blood and tissue. It can also be transmitted uh, by congenital, uh, which is, uh, carries a 1% to 10% transmission rate. Uh, from a meta-analysis, it shows a 4.7% transmission rate. Um, and these babies will typically have low birth weight um, and anemia. It can be tr transmitted by blood transfusion, blood products, uh, transplantation, and contaminated food, water, or drink. Um, 8 million people worldwide are affected with 10 to 12,000 deaths a year, primarily in South America. But it's thought to have um, 300,000 individuals affected living in the U.S. today. Here's a picture of the trypanosome bug. Um, here is a typical thatched roof house where the bugs uh, like to hang out in the roof, um, in the mud uh, that holds the roof together, as well as the, uh, the wood that holds the house um, structure together. Uh, so Chagas disease has a one to two week incubation period on average. Um, it's separated into acute and chronic phases. Uh, the acute phase will last two to three months roughly, uh, and the trypanosomiasis goes to be circulating in the blood at the time. And you have nonspecific kind of flu-like symptoms at the time. Um, but you can also have a shigoma, which is swelling at the bite side, and Romagna sign, uh, which is unilateral swelling of the upper and lower eyelids um, after you get inoculation via the conjunctiva. Uh, this is the photo of Romagna sign, and that's the uh, shigoma, the swelling at the bite site you can see. Um, the chronic phase, uh, you have a decreasing parasitemia, um, um, which is caused by the host immune system, uh, lowering the amount of parasites present. So at this time, you'll be unable to detect them by microscopy. And typically after uh, the disease um, happens, about two to three months after the onset, nearly all of these individuals will be asymptomatic for the first few decades. Um, which is called the indeterminate form, which is where you're asymptomatic, but you will have positive serology. Uh, cardiac or GI disease, uh, when it manifests itself, is called the ter determinate form, and that's uh, 20 to 40 percent of these individuals will unfortunately um, have one of these diseases. Uh, and reactivation is possible in immunocompromised uh, patients, so we've got to keep that in mind for our, our BMT and chemotherapy patients. Um, so chronic Chagas, a cardiomyopathy, or we called CCC, because um, it is a mouthful, 20 to 30 percent of these determinant cases on the previous slide uh, will develop the CCC. Um, you'll have heart failure, arrhythmias, uh, thromboembolisms, and chest pain syndromes. Um, and it is the, unfortunately the most common cause of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy in Latin America today. Uh, death in, in this disease, uh, 55 to 60 percent um, is from sudden cardiac death. 25 to 30 percent 
uh, is from heart failure and um, 10 to 15 percent from strokes. And interestingly, uh, ICD provides no mortality benefit and actually may worsen the pump function uh, of these individuals. And the presumed uh, mechanism of this um, CCC is from regional fibrosis and macro reentrant circuits. Um, there's a score that physicians can use to determine the prognosis, and it's called the RASI score, R A S S I. Um, and you'd separate into low, intermediate, and high probability of mortality at 10 years. Um, high mor mortality at 10 years is 84%. So gastrointestinal disease is a little less common than your cardiomyopathy cases, uh, 10 to 20 percent of the determinant cases, um, and it's because of immune-mediated injury to uh, the enteric neurons and the plexi of the gastrointestinal tracts. Uh, esophageal is most common um, over colonic involvement. Um, you can have progressive dysphagia, regurgitation, and megasophilus that does increase your risk for esophageal carcinoma. Um, and to treat this, you can use esophageal uh, sphincter pressure releasing mechanisms like um, nifedipine or surgery for the worst cases. Uh, megacolon is managed with a high fiber diet. Diagnosis is by, um, is by um, finding the parasites in the um, first few weeks where you had this high parasitemia burden. And remember that later on the parasitemia um, burden decreases, it makes it difficult to find. Uh, so you'll have to use serology and PCR, uh, but unfortunately, this is not widely available in many of the countries that have the, the disease present just because of the, the cost and um, laboratory equipment needed for this. Treatment prevention, um, benzidazole uh, for a long course of 60 days, two months, uh, is preferred nifurtamox um, for three to four months. But unfortunately, both of these carry a high chance of um, having peripheral neuropathy. Uh, but fortunately, the treatment cure is pretty high, uh, 60 to 85%. And you can prevent um, Chagas for um, insecticide usage, um, making sure that your you know, the fast house is, is, um, is taken care of, um, and screening of blood products, of course, and organ donors. Next one we'll be talking about is African trypanosomiasis, uh, which is caused by Trypanosoma brucei. Uh, there's two subspecies of these, and it's split into geographical distributions in Africa into east, uh, which is Rodensia, and then west, which is Gambiansi. Um, and it's spread by the Setsi fly. Um, and there's uh, the East African sleeping sickness is Rodensia, as I said, um, which is the, uh, Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, Zambia, and there's multiple reservoirs present for this. Uh, Western is what we'll be focusing more. Um, it's, it's the most common. Uh, it's Democratic Repo Republic of Congo, Angola, Sudan, Chad, Northern Uganda. Humans will serve as the main reservoir for this disease. And uh, there are a large amount of patients or individuals that are at risk for this, 65 million. Uh, but fortunately, uh, incidence has been decreasing over the past several decades, um, with less than a thousand cases reported in 2018. It's a photo of the Setsi fly there. Symptoms uh, split up into stage one and stage two. Uh, stage one is the hemolymphatic stage, uh, which is typically from whenever you day zero to three years, roughly. Um, and you'll have headaches, fever, malaise, arthralgias, very um, nonspecific symptoms this time. Uh, lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly are possible, um, and then you could have a shanker at the bite site, uh, which is more common with the rodency. Stage two is whenever you have um, CNS involvement, and so you'll have progressive diffuse meningoencephalitis, uh, parenchymal edema, uh, perivascular meningeal inflammatory infiltrates, and demyelination, unfortunately, and it is 100% fatal if left untreated. Uh, so sleep East African sleeping sickness is more rapidly progressing than it's um, than the other form of West African sleeping sickness, uh, which is more indolent. Um, of course, you'll have CNS symptoms um, and then deterioration and then rapid death. Uh, with West African sleeping sickness, death is usually after three years of um, stage two onset. Diagnosis is by finding parasites in uh, body fluid or tissue, such as lymph node or biopsy of that Schenker site. If it's the rodency, um, there is a higher parasite load in the rodency form, um, and serologic tests are not used. You need a lumbar puncture to assess for CNS involvement. Um, the criteria for this is elevated protein, um, elevated white blood cells greater than five, 
and activated plasma cells with IgM containing eosinophilic inclusions, which are uncommon. Those are referred to as morula cells of MOT, which are these activated uh, plasma cells. Um, and the presence of parasite in the CNS does change the management, as we'll find on um, the next slide. Neopterin, uh, greater than 14.3. If that's found, um, it has a really high sensitivity and specificity, um, 98 and 88% respectively for that. Uh, Neopterin is a catabolic product of guanosine triphosphate, which is a purine nucleotide, um, and it is made by macrophages and released in infection. Here's the photo of the parasite. Treatment of this um, for the Gambians, and they're split up into first and second stages, as you can see. Um, and the pentamidine is the is the preferred uh, treatment for first stage, and then eflornithine uh, for a week. Um, you're going to get a biannual uh, lumbar puncture for two years. Uh, relapse is if the CSF um, count increases, the the greater than five white blood cells we saw in the previous slide, as well as uh, parasites are found. Unfortunately, um, the optimal approach to treatment of relapse is uncertain, um, but you will retreat these individuals. And then the TB rodents, uh, first stage is sermon, and then second stage is Larsoprolol. So prevention, uh, minimize contact with the sets of flies, wear long sleeve shirts, uh, medium weight pants, inspect the vehicles. Um, flies are attracted to motion and to dust, so inspect the vehicles um, carefully when getting in, avoid brush, and of course, insect repellent. Next one we'll talk about is cystocercosis. Um, it's from ingestion of tinnitus solium eggs and then the shed uh, in the stool from the carriers. Most carriers do not develop symptoms, but they are at risk for auto inoculation later on. Um, it gets implanted in the tissue after uh, roughly one to two months. Uh, 50 million people worldwide are infected, which is likely an underestimation of the individuals infected. It's an endemic in Central and South America, Sub-Saharan Africa, India, and Asia. Um, and of course, the higher number of cases in the rural areas where they have these, um, where they have the the animals. So you can see the red here is an endemic. Uh, a lot of the world is is endemic. Suspected endemic is the kind of rose color, and then light pink is imported cases. Um, as you can see, the U.S. is one of those light pink areas. This is the photo of the um, tanistolium. Um, once ingested, the scolex will evaginate um, and attach to the, the small intestines using uh, suckers and hooks on its head. Um, for glottids, which are the segments, um, they're going to rise from the base of the scolex and gradually enlarge um, and keep making new proglottids, uh, which mature, mature over two to four months. Um, Grossly, each of these proglottids can contain 50,000 to 100,000 eggs, um, and they can reside there for several years. So neurocystis is divided into parenchymal and extraparenchymal forms, which can be present um, as a single lesion, which is most common in India, uh, or multiple, like in Latin America, Mexico. Um, intraparenchymal lesions are the most common form, uh, typically associated with seizures or headaches, uh, your kind of classic signs of neurocystis um, which happens usually three to four, three to five years after the initial infection, but uh, can be much, much longer. Symptoms um, for the extrapyramidal lesions, uh, usually from um, symptoms of increased intracranial pressure. Um, it can be split up into intravascular, intraventricular, subarachnoid, spinal, or ocular, uh, which is much less common. Um, the diagnosis and treatment of neurocystis is by good history physical, imaging, uh, clinical studies, serology, um, and you can treat with uh, fixing the hydrocephalus if uh, the cystis cerci do become dis dislodged and go into the ventricle system. Um, of course, seizure therapy. Now, one of the important parts here is to give steroids before you actually treat, which would decrease the risk of um, having edema in the brain after you treat with the albendazole and praziquantel. So we want to make sure that we give these steroids prior to the treatment uh, with patients with viable cysts, um, which are seen here. Uh, the last one is um, calcification. These are non-viable cysts, and that's stage uh, four involution. Stage one is vesicular. Stage two is colloidal, where you have an enhancement in edema. Then stage three is you start calcifying and decrease the edema in the brain. Prevention uh, is reducing person-to-person -person transmission. This is, should be really um, thought of as a person-to-person -person disease rather than animal-to-persons. 
Um, you can spec the meat. Freezing the meat kills the cystic circi, um, and then the limiting access of swine to human waste, and of course, hand hygiene. It's a picture of the meat. It's called measly meat. Uh, you can see that the and um, picture C is the teeny solium eggs um, that they're removing from from this meat. Next, we'll be talking about the Bruley ulcer, um, which is named for the Bruley district in Uganda. It's caused by Mycobacterium, Mycobacterium ulcerans, uh, which interestingly has a 98% uh, homology uh, structure uh, to Mycobacterium marinum, and it produces mycolacto, which is a potent cytotoxin, of course, breaks down skin. Uh, it is the third most common mycobacterial infection worldwide, which I found interesting, uh, reported in 33 countries worldwide, um, several thousand cases per year. Uh, unfortunately, it affects mostly younger individuals in West Africa. It is linked to contaminated water, and transmission is not fully understood, which makes um, prevention uh, a little difficult. There's a picture of a Bruley ulcer uh, of the the right arm, right hand wrist. Another one, um, and there's another one right there. You can see that these are are um, unsightly. Surprisingly, they are painless um, throughout the, the involution of the disease. Um, the lesion will start small, typically less than five centimeters, and then it ulcerates slowly, progresses. Um, frequently, you have sub superficial infection, can lead to deeper infections, um, of course, um, and produce systemic symptoms from there. Um, diagnosis is by clinical presentation in these endemic areas, of course. Um, PCR is the most uh, sensitive as well as, well as histology. Um, culture does take six weeks for growth, unfortunately. Prevention of this, I said, it's, it's difficult to, to prevent as we don't exactly know what uh, the transmission is for this. Um, possibly contaminated water, um, protective clothing. Um, and wound cleansing. Um, you treat with rifampin, chlorithromycin for two months. Uh, alternatives, rifampin, streptomycin, um, or rifampin and quinolone. Uh, of course, local debridement and treatment of uh, systemic infections or underlying infection if present uh, with surgery. Um, interestingly, there's a 1972 study uh, that involves roughly 5,000 cases, and they found the BCG vaccine offers limited protection for a brief amount of time. Um, just oh, six to 12 months. Um, the last one we'll be discussing is onchocerciasis, uh, which is uh, is the uh, river blindness um, caused by onchocerca uh, volvulus, uh, which is a filarial nematode in the vectors of black fly. 99% of cases occur in sub-Saharan Africa, and 120 million people are at risk in Africa. Um, it's the second leading cause of blindness uh, worldwide, unfortunately, well, 500,000 um, people are blind due to this. And there's a picture of the black fly. Um, you can see here um, that endemic countries, Brazil, um, and much of the Saharan belt, um, it's endemic. It's a picture of the uh, filaria worm. Uh, females can get quite large, 20 to 80 centimeters. Males are much smaller, uh, but females will produce uh, adult worms, uh, roughly 10 to 12 months after the initial infection. Um, the females do live deeper in intramuscular subcutaneous tissue. Um, and one important thing to know about these uh, microfilaria or adult worms are that they harbor Wolbachia bacteria, uh, which are encapsulated whenever the bacteria are alive. But when they die, uh, they, release, um, they release this um, Wolbachia and this has a, it's a potent stimulator of toll-like receptors causing this uh, corneal disease um, after, after these um, microfilaria die. Symptoms, uh, microfilaria in the eye is the first sign you can see before you have pathology. You can see these on a slit lamp. Um, then you have punctate keratitis, which are snowflake opacities, uh, dead microfilaria. Um, it's causing this, and this is reversible. So you have sclerosing keratitis, which is a fibrovascular change. And lastly, you have onchocoreoretinitis, um, which is where you have the damage to the, in the um, pigment epithelium. And you will eventually have this um, hisset ridley fundus, which is just a name for the um, Belgian and English um, ophthalmologists who studied this um, back in the 1930s. So here you can see the, um, the snowflake opacities of the punctate keratitis. Uh, here is sclerosing keratitis, the fibrovascular change. You can see the cornea. 
And then unfortunately, here's the scarring, uh, retinal damage um, on the eye. You can also have skin manifestations, which is important to note. Um, you can have these nodules in the skin, um, which contain adult worms, uh, and the majority of these nodules are the deep tissue. There's five different uh, categories of oncodermatitis, uh, acute and pa chronic papular, lichenified, uh, skin atrophy, hanging groin, and depigmentation, which is also referred to as leopard skin. Um, these nodes generally are not palpable, um, but here's one that is, you can see on the knee. Diagnosis, um, it's difficult to distinguish from low aloa infections, but that is important to, to distinguish them because if you treat low aloa with DEC, um, the preferred treatment for it, it can cause this to be worse um, treatment. Um, so the snip, skin snip is the gold standard. Um, you can incubate this for 24 hours and stain it with H&E, um, but unfortunately you're unable to detect this early in infection, and it does take quite a while for these uh, worms to mature and release the adult worms, uh, so this is why you can't get it early in infection. Slit lamp ex exam, which you can see the, um, the snowflake opacities, the eye. Serology is often unreliable, um, but PCR is, is, off, is sensitive, but it's not available worldwide. Treatment, uh, you're going to pre-treat for this dox, uh, for the Wolbachia uh, with doxycycline uh, because remember it is a potent simulator of the toll-like receptor, so you want to kill off these bacteria before um, before starting treatment with uh, ivermectin, um, which is just one dose. You repeat every three to six months until you're asymptomatic. It may require long periods of time um, for this treatment to complete. Uh, there are mass treatment programs um, worldwide, APOC, um, which will distribute ivermectin every 6 to 12 months in hyperendemic and mesoendemic areas. Uh, hyperendemic areas are defined as uh, palpable nodules amongst a sample of 50 adult males of more than 40% um, of these males will have these nodules. Mesomeric um, have a prevalence of 20 to 39%. Um, and these, these mass treatment programs do significantly decrease uh, the burden of the disease worldwide. Uh, prevention, um, and we're going to, um, many of these groups have local vector eradication um, and as well as the mass ivermectin treatment as we discussed on a previous slide. But they're, they're very serious about eliminating um, uh, onychocerciasis worldwide. Um, this was a a um, plan and in, in, uh, started in 1999 uh, for Vision 2020, the right to sight um, for the uh, global initiative to eliminate river blindness. Um, and on the page, you can find the, the phrase, um, a world in which nobody is needlessly visually impaired where those with unavoidable vision loss can achieve their full potential. So the conclusion of my grand rounds is that, uh, though uncommon in the U.S. Um, and thus largely out of mind uh, where we live, uh, neglected tropical diseases do cause significant uh, problems worldwide, um, leading to loss amount of uh, or mass amount of death and or permanent disability. Um, but fortunately, through significant research um, of these disease processes and education, um, they are um, so getting reduced uh, worldwide. So references. Any questions?